Greetings. My name is Mr. Craig, Frankfurt High School. Today we will be experimenting within the wonderful world of collage. Here we have, um, as I, you know, I gave you a list of things that you could use, but you know, as I'm, I was thinking about it more and more, I realized that you know, you can just keep expanding upon that. So, you have your basics, your pencil because you need that to like sketch out what it is you're gonna, you know, your, your composition. These are what I spoke about, um, these paint chips or, or paint samples, color samples, what have you. You can get these for free at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any other hardware store. You may also want to have colored pencils. Now, of course, this is the kind of set that you would have at school. Um, I'm not expecting you to have this many colors. Magazines, um, newspaper. You may work on this size paper, or this size paper, or another size paper. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you fulfill the requirement. Now glue. Here I have a glue stick. Not as messy uh, as um, Elmer's glue, but you may find that Elmer's glue, in some instances, with some types of paper, works better. Another thing, like packages you get from, you know, whatever you order in the mail, this can also be used, as well as paper bags. As you can see, I'm, I'm using this photo of this uh, model to, uh, from a newspaper to help me to, um, to start to develop my collage. Now, it doesn't have to be exact, there doesn't have to be, it, you know, it's, it's obviously abstracted. Um, the idea of what is behind the curtain and how I could incorporate things that I find in magazines and so forth and build a whole little menagerie here behind the curtain. I'm just thinking like this is, you know, telling me, okay, so I got, I got the figure, I have the curtain, I have her pulling away the curtain. It's very basic. So because I've done this, I then really don't need this anymore. So then what I would do is I would start to thumb through various magazines and I'd start to look at you know, different pictures, images that I could then piece together with color um, or for instance I could juxtapose black and white with color I could cut this out with my scissors and then I would have a hole here which I could then position, you know, I could put it here and then I could position an arm coming out. There's just a lot of different ideas and because you're using images and things that have already been uh, more or less created for you, uh, all you're doing is, is putting it together, like your own puzzle. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't quite um, fit. So what I would do is then I can cut this to fit the shape of the curtain. And then I could use another piece to then follow that same curve. Okay, so some of you might be wondering like, how do you make sure that you cut the right shape for your paper to like fill this little void? So what I do is I use my pencil or your marker and I mark off on my paper where exactly the curtain falls. So then I know that this is the shape 
that I need to cut. See, so there it fits perfectly. And then I glue it and I'm already starting to develop my collage. Put your ideas out there. Don't glue anything down immediately, you know, just, you know, you move this stuff around. You vary the color. Orange is a complement of blue. You could scrap the whole thing and just take them out um, and then put something else in place. So what I've done here is I've put this image behind the other image and then to extend the image that's behind it, I've, again, continuing to experiment here, the paddle, you know, I extend it by turning it into a piece of color so that it will go on top of the water. Um, I also thought about this being the horizon. Okay, so as you can see with this color, I'm, I'm starting to make the shape of the, the drape or the uh, curtain. So you might think to yourself, well, especially when you start doing it yourself, gluing each piece can be an arduous task. So, to make that easier, move this stuff away after you've kind of positioned it. Take the glue, or glue, either Elmer's glue or the glue stick, and then shift, slowly shift your, um, the pieces that you want to put there over top. And then as you find, it'll be much easier to get it all in there as you see fit. So, as I was looking through magazines, um, I suddenly found uh, a lumberjack uh, sawing up some large trees, uh, probably redwoods from California sort, um, judging by the size of the trunk. And then I immediately connected that with the relationship of this rock formation that this gentleman is climbing. And then I cut out the image and just kept going back and forth to check to make sure that it works or fit with the rock formation. Now, this is another way of, of, you know, just putting your own little touch on things and uh, a sense of design or, or abstraction. You know, you don't have to necessarily just um, stick to images from newspapers, magazines, or whatever and try and piece it together into some sort of surrealist uh, environment. Um, you can add strips of color on top so that the collage becomes multi-layered and isn't just one flat surface. In some instances, when you're cutting something out for your collage, you want to try and maneuver the scissors so that it goes exactly around the form, so that it cuts, does a pure outline. And it 
helps you, it will enable you to make it into more of a piece of it, of a bigger puzzle. So, when you're looking through, you know, you, you try and find similar colors, which can be in anything from like the flat background of something to obviously uh, a drink. So, for the folds in the, um, in the curtain, like here I just used all similar shades of or variations of the same color, but um, here I decided to do complements. So as you know, violet and yellow complement one another. So the folds, I put different shades of violet, and then the regular, the bigger pieces of fabric, uh, I used yellow. So again, you know, I'm continuing to slowly um, put this together. As you can see, working with different textures, different colors, color relationships. Um, like as again, we, we go to complementary colors with blue and orange. You do not have to draw or be able to draw to make a great composition. So see, this was all just thrown together. There was no drawing involved. Now here, I copied, I looked at a, a, a image of a woman in a newspaper as reference, sketched it out, and then now I'm building on top of that. But you don't necessarily have to draw. It can be just an assemblage of sorts, or a collage. So, a couple tips. Um, you, you almost perfect an outline. You may have instances where there's like a little bit of white in the background. Use a marker. Use a Sharpie marker to kind of outline and get rid of those little areas. It, it just works beautifully. Also, when you're using your glue stick, don't use a lot of glue so that you can take stuff up and put it back down and you're not going to rip it. So like for instance, I had to keep maneuvering all of this, so I had to keep pulling up and down and so forth and so on. So in order to get it right, it was best that I didn't have a lot of glue on it so that um, the paper was more manageable. If you put a lot of glue on it, you're not going to be able to move it anywhere and you're going to get very frustrated. So here we have the finished collage. There's relationships going on throughout the piece to establish a sense of symmetry. We have, I'm using these lines, balancing different seas or oceans. There's just emphasis on nature. It's a lot of work. I hope you guys have as much fun with it as I did.